Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. In today's episode, we'll be examining cybersecurity supply chain risk management. We also invite you to check out and discover more original content at our website. It's www.csiac.org. Supply chain attacks, also referred to as value chain or third party attacks, occur when hackers are able to infiltrate a system by exploiting vulnerabilities from third party logistics providers. These types of high value cyber attacks are designed to disrupt operations. They pose an increasingly significant risk to military equipment through the proliferation of counterfeit electronic components. This has the potential to delay missions and ultimately jeopardize service members. When disruptive events occur, many supply chains tend to break down. It can take substantial time to restore operations and affect the availability of the systems. However, some supply chains are able to operate in a degraded environment and continue to satisfy the needs of their customers. Many different organizations and supply chain managers have developed a variety of cost-effective and time-efficient risk management strategies to protect against inevitable threats. In this podcast, we will examine the Cybersecurity Supply Chain Risk Management, CSCRM, and mitigation tactics using design strategies to strengthen SCRM efforts for organizations directly involved in the delivery of products, services, and solutions to the federal government and all other tiers of the global supply chain. In today's global marketplace, supply chain risk comes from many areas, such as natural disasters, acts of war, terrorism, supplier bankruptcy, theft, damage, and data breaches. The supply chain ecosystem is extremely vulnerable to operational risks and uncertainties due to unpredictable events. In a recent survey, More than 75% of companies reported at least one supply chain disruption in the past 12 months. About 20% of those companies went out of business within 18 months. Over the last 10 years, we have witnessed many different types of unpredictable disasters, such as terrorist attacks, earthquakes, economic crises, tsunamis, strikes, and computer virus attacks, to name a few. According to two independent studies, historical data indicates that the total number of natural and man-made disasters has risen dramatically over the last 10 years. It was reported that the average cost of these disasters has increased by a factor of 10 since the 1960s. In view of the substantial negative financial implications and operational impact associated with a significant supply chain disruption, the majority of supply chain executives are expending efforts to develop and implement effective CSCRM strategies. These include initiatives to increase revenue, such as increasing the product variety, uh, introducing new products more frequently, reducing costs, going to vendor managed inventory, and reducing assets. There are numerous examples of supply chain vulnerabilities. 
Ericsson lost 400 million euros after their supplier's semiconductor plant in New Mexico caught fire. Land Rover laid off 1,400 workers after one of their key suppliers became insolvent. And Dole's revenue declined after their banana plantations in Central America were destroyed by Hurricane Mitch. Supply chain risk management is a resilience issue that crosses many boundaries and requires a whole of government approach. The Department of Homeland Security's National Protection and Programs Directorate is responsible for securing federal networks and safeguarding critical infrastructure from cyber threats. The DOD has made progress by removing and addressing deficiency areas identified by the GAO in their DOD Supply Chain High Risk Report. Studies by the Defense Science Board noted significant challenges with supply chain management in a cyber-contested environment and identified several attack surfaces in the global industry supply chain, DOD acquisition supply chain, and the overall sustainment supply chain. While we continuously see stories of data hacks in the news, John Boyens, a senior computer security advisor at NIST, has stated, it may appear that cybersecurity incidences are on the rise, but hacks may have been just as frequent in the past. However, today's hacks pose a greater threat and have a greater impact due to more technology connections. A principal threat analyst, Shane McDougall, has outlined three cyber hack purposes. First is for industrial espionage for corporate information gathering. Second is using the infrastructure to launch attacks on other organizations. And third, using the infrastructure to access computing resources, such as for Bitcoin mining or to store illicit things online. He stated that cybersecurity is almost always an afterthought for many companies. Some of the largest distributors appear unconcerned about hacking. What they do not understand is that a wiper attack is a certain type of malware that can take down your systems and erase them. Unless you have a, a good backup system, you're not going to recover. Companies pay little attention to disaster recovery and backup. About 90% of companies are down for months after undergoing a wiper attack. Losing data that controls parts of manufacturing or logistics can be devastating to the entire supply chain. Organizations relying heavily on technology for their products or services tend to care about a secure supply chain. Boyan said, if they don't, they'll go out of business. All departments in a company should be involved. Still, Cyber hackers continue to exploit supply chain vulnerabilities. They disrupt operations, exfiltrate intellectual property, and cause massive damage. These supply chain attacks represent more than just monetary loss. More importantly, it comes with lost innovation, jobs, economic advantage, and potential reductions in U.S. military strength. According to the GAO, more than 90% of all commercial electronic components and IT systems are operational within the DOD Information Network, the DODEN, and China has a significant segment in the global enterprise supply chain network. Hackers working for the Russian government use Kaspersky Labs antivirus software to steal details about how the U.S. penetrates foreign computer networks and defends against cyber attacks. Supply chain security encompasses efforts to reduce the risk of both external and internal threats, such as terrorism, piracy, and theft in both the real world 
and in cyberspace. Physical threats to your supply chain security can come from multiple sources. For example, a cargo ship may be hijacked by pirates, which is an external threat. However, threats can also come from internal sources, like disgruntled employees who steal or sabotage inventory. There are a variety of methods used to combat these physical threats, such as using standardized identification and credentials, using state-of-the-art trace and tracking technology, employing advanced locking mechanisms, thoroughly screening employees, and utilizing standardized inspection procedures as well as mobile technology applications. In the past, physical supply chain threats were the major worry of the business world. Now, with the rise of the internet and the increase in software-reliant systems, new threats exist. Internet-reliant supply chain activities increase the cyber attack surface and cyber attack vectors. The Petya ransomware cyber attack crippled firms across Europe and the US. Other examples of cyber-related attacks include computer hardware delivered with malware already installed, malware inserted into software either knowingly or unknowingly, and counterfeit computer hardware. While all of these cyber-related attacks are alarming, there are a variety of methods that a business can employ to combat cyber threats, such as ensuring that all parties involved in your supply chain are certified to a certain compliance standard that you set, conducting risk assessments of potential vendors and partners, specifying directly who has ownership of certain data being used or gathered, improving lines of information sharing and communication, and adopting a defense in depth strategy. Let's examine the underlying principles of resilience in cybersecurity supply chain risk management framework. First, you need to realize that there is no easy button that will eliminate all cyber threats to your data or to your network. Any knowledgeable chief information security officer will tell you that exploitation is simply a fact in today's threat landscape. But you can stay ahead of cyber attacks by implementing a number of information assurance controls and known best practices. Many organizations have identified various practices which have assisted their operations with managing the cyber risk to their supply chain. To start, organizations should build cybersecurity mandates into their master service agreements. This would influence suppliers to maintain and or improve cybersecurity supply chain risk management practices. Consider evaluating and identifying current risks by taking a critical look at your business and identifying areas with risk exposure. Organizations should require suppliers to demonstrate evidence of good security controls as well as the effectiveness of their controls. Request metrics of security effectiveness. Deploy data collection methods and analysis techniques. Employ continual monitoring and review of risks and controls. Establish notification and recognition of cybersecurity incidents. Coordinate responses to cybersecurity incidents. Establish vulnerability identification. Incorporate the attributes of successful performance measures. Employ appropriate controls to manage data. And integrate incident response and forensics. Some companies manage network security and third-party interfaces in a very strict manner. 
company may position vendor networking gear at their sites and control the use of such gear. Only a few machines are allowed to connect, and the company manages the network address translation and access is controlled on both ends. Supply chain managers should test their networks and systems for vulnerabilities and weaknesses. Determine which of the CSCMR principles or functions provide the best proactive defensive countermeasures to the cyber attacks. Then implement the controls necessary to reduce the attack surface for critical assets. While supply chain strategies allow companies to deploy contingency plans when disruptions occur, they would be far less vulnerable by reducing their exposure to risk in the first place. While the majority of these are difficult to prevent, there are numerous ways to reduce the impact of the disruptions on the supply chain. However, there is no magic bullet that will solve this problem. Information security personnel must assess the risk and select the strategies that are best for their organization. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content useful and informative. If you would like to provide us with feedback, please comment on this video or visit our website at www.csiac.org where you can also find additional content to review. Thank you.